lasers on sharks, but rather dolphins. Yes, you did hear that correctly. Moscow has deployed trained dolphins at the entrance of a key black seaport to protect one of its naval bases. These are satellite photos showing that at the start, well, that's not a satellite photo. <laughs> That is. That is. There we go. At the start of the invasion, two dolphin pens were placed at the entrance to the harbor of Russia's most significant naval base uh, in the Black Sea. And you can see where the dolphin pens are. The dolphins may be preventing Ukrainian divers from infiltrating the harbor underwater and damaging warships. Bring in now retired Air Force Special Operations Commander Major Len Ignazio. Spent a lot of time working on maritime defense systems. In a weird way, it's probably hard to find something better than a dolphin. Actually, you're correct. I mean, the fastest swimmer we have, Michael Phelps, swims about six miles per hour. A dolphin can swim up to 18 comfortably, and it is uh, definitely the best sonar, best detection that you can possibly get in the world that's never been mimicked with technology. All right, so are, are these killer dolphins, or are they just, like, alerting the Russians? How does it work to, to use dolphins, and how does the U.S. compare in this? Sure, real quick. So it hasn't been just something new. We started a program in the 15, 59 and Russians started catching up around 65, 1965. So the systems are mainly designed to find objects. So find mines and locate mines, underwater apparatus that you're trying to get in, uh, and also escort ships. But yes, it does do interdiction for saboteurs, underwater divers, and so forth. The Russians uh, are said to have spikes and knives on the heads of dolphins that would ram. And yes, the United States, we've had some actually post in uh, books and articles that we have a lethal component as well where we would hit them with something similar. So yes, they can actually go out and interdict personnel, which is really one of the main concerns where we've seen the Ukrainians do some great things against the Russians, but they're also used against mines and they work in harbors, littoral or very shallow areas, and they can actually work out at sea escorting ships as well. So a very formidable tool. And dangerous one. Major, what other animals, mammals are being used for, for warfare and defense that we don't know about? I, I was hearing today beluga whales, seals. Sea no lions, sharks, actually. Uh, no sharks. Sea lions, sea lions. Are, are used. Yeah, so it, it, again, in the United States, we have probably about 75 to 90 dolphins. And again, this is all, it's a sensitive program, of course. But the sea lions are also, they're very, very attuned. They're trainable. They're intelligent. Along with dolphins, they're very fast, good in, you know, dirty water or, or uh, deep waters as far. And so the idea that sea lions can actually grab a diver as well and bring them to the surface uh, does exist. Now, we're much more thoughtful about sea life here in the United States, where the Russian aren't and actually in the North Sea not too not too long ago a beluga whale surfaced with a a weird type of harness so the Russians probably use dolphins and whales and they're very intelligent animals susceptible to train like this hmm. uh, as interesting as the dolphins are uh, you you've got a war going on on land in eastern Ukraine now that it's very different than what's happening or what we saw happen in in Kiev at the beginning of the invasion uh, reports now that the Russians are literally stuck in the mud. We've been talking about this for months now, is, is that it, the ground thaws and you've got mud season in eastern Ukraine. Their tanks are bogged down. Uh, just in the past couple of days, we have started to see video of U.S. heavy artillery uh, coming in that's going to be transferred to the Ukrainians. Uh, is it in time? I think it's definitely a necessity. Uh, is it in time? I'll, I think because of the mud areas, you know, they call it the land of no roads around this thaw area where the muds are, are rather intense. I think it's good timing because the Russians are, are building between their, their northern, their central, and their southern grouping of forces that goes in from Izium down to Donetsk and also through the Crimea is you're seeing more tanks and you're seeing more armored vehicles moving in. They're fighting a lot smarter. They use reconnaissance artillery to sort of battle, you know, prepare the battlefield and move in. So this artillery is critical. So as we see that and an increase of armored vehicles coming in from European nations and others. So yeah, it's really interesting is that this is almost looking like one of those World War II tank wars as we see things comes in. But the, the Russians are really starting to work a lot smarter than they did in the initial phase that uh, they didn't do so well in. Yeah, they're kind of learning as they go. The other thing I was paying particular attention to tonight, Major, was these attacks that we're seeing increased on the western side of Ukraine. And it's getting pretty close to the border with Poland, where we've got U.S. troops that are stationed, kind of watching and waiting um, if it escalates to that point. It does seem, though, that the threat, the risk right now is ratcheting up um, as we watch these new targets in Lviv and also the capital city of Kyiv today. 
Yes, and you guys have been great with the questions over the time where we saw that the supply chain was doing very well for the Ukrainians, and now we're starting to see the attacks from the Russians, mainly using uh, longer-range bombers and missile systems to attack that particular supply chain. So these weapons have to come in from the West. And again, it's about six, 700-mile country that they have to travel across to get to the critical battle areas. So you're seeing the Ukrainians fight smarter with this new journal that we talked about. He's using more of the missile systems and the uh, long-range bombers. And you also have about 1,500 uh, Russian troops in Moldova and the uh, uh, Transnitalia, I'm horrible at the pronunciation, area. And so Odessa is really going to be a critical point. We've mentioned that because if the Russians are able to close that gap in Odessa, and I think that's going to be something happening in the next 7 to 14 days, is that Ukraine becomes a landlocked nation. And the Russians do have 20 ships or so in the Black Sea, and we haven't seen too much of naval engagement. So there's a lot happening, and it's a critical time, and I think those supply chains are going to be hit hard. Yep, as we send more and more weapons in. Uh, we appreciate your time tonight, as always, Major Glenn Ignazio. Good to see you. Good to see always. you. Always, and no lasers on dolphins that I know of. <laughs> Not yet. And if he knew, he wouldn't tell us. <laughs> Not yet. Good All to right. see you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, let's Thank talk. You. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.